every community has its pros and cons. We're going to talk about my top five pros and cons about living in Port Dover. I'm going to be transparent and honest with you about everything I think, but I think that's important that you understand that. So my top five pros and cons living in Port Dover. Let's get to it right now. Hey there, my name is Peter Butler. I'm a real estate agent here in Haldeman, Norfolk County. And if you're looking for more, more information on living in Port Dover, you're in the right place. I put out videos every week talking about living here, playing here, working right here in Port Dover and the surrounding area. So you're in the right spot. Now, hit that like and subscribe button. That way you'll get notified when I put new videos up and great information. So today we're going to talk about the top five pros and cons of living in Port Dover. And again, these are my top five. They could change next month, but right now these are my top five pros and cons. And it's gonna be honest, honest, straightforward information. Um, again, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's just the way it is, but here it is, my top five pros and cons of living in Port Dover. So number one is things to do. It's a busy place here in Port Dover, a very busy social calendar. There's a lot of community groups from the Port Dover Legion, the, uh, of course, Lions, the Lions Club, the Kinsman Club, the library is very active as well. The, um, what else? We got Norfolk Potters Guild. There's a great quilting guild here in town as well. Uh, fitness groups, yoga groups, running and walking groups, uh, the karate, uh, even Norfolk County, have, they have official committees that you can join as well. They put the word out for the citizens to join uh, in some of those committees, be able to help make decisions. Churches, festivals, parades, celebrations. It's a very busy town, especially in the summertime. We're, we're, we are a tourist town, so we do get a lot of people. And again, there's so many activities to do. I mean, honest to goodness, every day you could be doing something. Uh, in particular, I mean, the Port Dover Legion, for example, they have uh, their entertainment on the weekends, on Thursday nights. They have suppers. You can pop in and have supper. Uh, the, uh, some of the fitness groups, they actually have their fitness classes down by the pier and down by the water. And the, I believe the yoga groups, they meet down at the beach sometimes in the summertime. So it's just a wonderful spot. There's so much to do. I mean, you move to Port Dover, you're not going to be bored. If you're bored, it's your own fault because again, there's just so much to do. The July 1st parade is a busy time. Actually, Port Dover brags it has the longest running I can never say this word, Columbian Parade in Canada. It's been running uh, forever, like since the 1800s. We've been having the July 1st Parade. It's a large event. Friday the 13th celebrations as well. The, those are the bike events, and they're very busy. And it's just so much fun. Again, very busy town, lots and lots and lots to do. That's a pro. The con is almost the same thing. It's easy to become involved in so much to... You know, I want to go to the Legion. I love the dances and I like to go to the suppers. But the Lions Club do so much work and volunteer work for the community, you know. And, and the Potters Guild, there's some great potters that are in the area. I'm not sure if you've heard of Nancy Brown, Nancy Reynolds Brown. She's an amazing potter. Some of the stuff she does is just amazing. Uh, the Quilting Guild, the, the fitness groups, the walking group. There's so much to do, you can become overwhelmed. So it's important to just kind of control how much you're, you're, you're involved in all these different groups because there is so much to do. Th that being said, again, it makes for a very busy time here in Port Dover with all the celebrations and parades and it makes for a lot of people, that's for sure. So number two, number two pros and cons is public transit. Now, Port Dover is a smaller town. The last, the last um, population count was a... I believe we were at 6,500 people, residents here in Port Dover. Uh, so not a large town. So there's no buses that run. Uh, there's, no, there's no buses. There is a taxi service out of out of Simcoe, and I believe there's a delivery service here in town. There's also a ride in Norfolk. So Norfolk County has this bus that runs from community to community to community. So, so town to town to town. So Port Dover to Simcoe to Port Rowan to Waterford, it runs around. It's usually in the summertime that it runs. I believe it runs in the winter as well, but only a couple times a day. So there's no formal public transit. So as so you know, as per se, as you would see in you know downtown Hamilton or in Toronto, where the buses run all the time, and you just want to go somewhere, jump on a bus and go. So that is one of the things. There's no Uber, none of these lifts, none of the other newer um, uh, ride services out there here in in Port Dover. Now. That's 
that's one of the, the, the cons. The pros to that is that it does make for a quieter town. Your, your street aren't full of buses and all the, these, these uh, extra public transit type vehicles running through town. And it keeps that small town feel as well. I mean, honestly, here in Port Dover, if you're at Mike's No Frills and you want to walk down to the beach to get down to see the beach house, it's about a 30 minute walk, to be honest. But honest to goodness, you're, you're, you're downtown in, in 10, 15 minutes from the north end, the, the north end of, of Port Dover. So everything is within walking distance. And being a small town, you, you do have, it's an enjoyable walk. It's very scenic and it's a lovely walk. So public transit is a challenge here in town, but it's kind of a pro and it's also a con to not have it here in town. So, but speaking of our town and downtown, the third pro and con is a cute little town. Um, the pros, we have all these little shops and restaurants. You can, I mean, I do this. I, I grew up in town and I do this. I park the car and just walk walk down the street checking out the little shops. They've always got something new. There's so many great shops. 13 Reasons is on the corner of Chapman and Main. You go in there, they've got great women's fashion and they've got some they've got some men's things as well, men's men's clothing as well. They've got um, Norfolk County, you know, branded type uh, clothing as well. It's a nice shop and, and Robin has some wonderful items in there. Right next door is Cottage North Soap Works. They make their own soap. Okay, so the soap made that you buy from Cottage North Soap Works is made right there. So it's wonderful as well. Uh, you pop down, I mean, my goodness, um, all the, you, you get down further into Lakeside Savings. Um, these Shoes is a new one. You get down to the Dover Cheese Shops, a wonderful spots. Restaurants, the, the coffee shop, it's called The Coffee Shop. Uh, great little mom and pop um, little restaurant. Uh, wonderful food in there. Across the street is Stoney's Hardware. Um, the apothecary, Mike's apothecary, Mike Marini, he's a, a pharmacist and he has an old timey type of, of apothecary in there. You go farther down into Lighthouse Festival Theater, into Schoolfields Restaurant, um, Trisha's Bakery. There's just so many wonderful little shops and restaurants here in town. You could spend all Saturday just, just walking from one end of the street to the other, looking in all the shops, stopping for lunch and a coffee and stuff like that. The con, the cons to that, it's a mix for a busy time because it is a lovely walk. We get a lot of people here in the summertime. We're a tourist town, so we get a lot of people. So you could end up standing in line and waiting for things. I mean, if I go to say, if I was to go to Timmy's for a coffee, the lineup for the vehicle, for the drive through was usually out to the street. Um, long lineup to get inside, especially now with COVID, makes it a little tougher. They only allow so many people in the, in the, in the building at a time going downtown to get a you know get a little bite to eat at one of the maybe the arbor to get a hot dog you're standing in line because there's a lot of people limited parking there's not a lot of parking norfolk county is trying to to remedy that amy martin our counselor for ward six is amazing i can't big shout out to amy i can't say enough about her uh she's doing a great job trying to get that figured out with the rest of council our parking problems here in Port Dover. So there are some cons to living in a tourist town. It can get very busy in the summertime. I've seen people that are parking up towards the school to go down to the beach, um, to spend the time down at the beach and then make for a busy beach as well. So, I mean, it's pluses and minuses when it comes to that, but it is a great little town and so many great little shops. Um, but speaking of restaurants, uh, there's a lot of great restaurants, so many choices here in town. Honest to goodness, you can go to the Beach House, which has, um, of course, Lake Erie Perch, like a bread beer, beer battered Lake Erie Perch. You've got a wonderful view of the water. Go to the Erie Beach. They have, they're, they're a long established restaurant. The Cove Room is fine dining. And it's, it's, it's just so traditional of that older style fine dining. You want to put a suit on. You want to go down there and have a lovely meal. Have the celery bread. My mouth is just watering thinking about the celery bread and all the, the wonderful salads and the homemade desserts, or go upstairs to the terrace room. The terrace room is more of a um, more of a family dining type place again, although they have perch as well, but it's it's more of a cracker crumb type of coating and it's so good. The perch, the perch tacos, they have the, the balcony, the patio, the, the rooftop balcony patio that overlooks the beach. Wonderful view there as well. Um, going further up, Schoolfields Bistro has wonderful food. Michael Haywood is an amazing chef. You got to pop in there as well. Farther up, the Dave and Kathy's at the coffee shop. 
Trisha's Bakery, the Crepe House. Um, there's just so many great places. The Coco Cabana Coffee Shop. They make their own fudge down there and chocolates. Urban Parisian Brad is a, a, a certified pastry chef and the man is a magician. You've got to pop in there. Urban Parisian, they're at the other end of town towards the school. So many great places to eat. Um, so that's that's the pros. There's lots of places to eat in Port Dover. One of the cons, tough to tough to find a con for the restaurants, you know, eating in here in Port Dover. Um, but if I was going to pick a con, it would be the lack of of ethnic choices. So, you know, looking for, I mean, again, there's a lot of great places to eat, but looking for a place like maybe traditional Indian or traditional Greek, or maybe a nice a traditional Italian restaurant, you know, um, places like that, there's a need for that. Um, again, maybe a, a, an Indian restaurant as well, East Indian restaurant. There's just so many great choices out there that we need here in Port Dover. Um, so that would maybe be a bit of a con. I'd like to see more of that in, in, the, in the future, for sure. A little more choice. Um, but number five, Port Dover is a desirable location, for sure. People are moving to Port Dover. You know, even when we've seen a downturn in the market over the years, Port Dover has always done well. People are looking to move to Port Dover. What happens is they come to Port Dover in the summertime. They come to one of the festivals, the parades, and they think, wow, what a great place to retire. So we're seeing a lot of retirees moving to Port Dover, maybe when they retire or when they're soon going to retire. They may move here, work for a year, just commute back and forth, and then uh, of course retire here, get in on the market early. So that's one of the pros, it's a very desirable spot. So if you buy in Port Dover, your, your home is going to hold its value and see big increases as well. We've seen some huge increases since 2016. Some of the, the, the percentage increases per year has just been out of this world. We can't, it's just been unprecedented. I've never seen these types of numbers, these types of appreciation over the years. Um, but the con of that, of course, is, um, you know, again, the price of housing. So uh, what you would pay here in Port Dover, you could maybe buy in Simcoe or, Wa or maybe Waterford, for a lower price. We are seeing higher prices here. We're seeing the average sale price in Dover is approaching $600,000. So in comparison to maybe Toronto or Oakville or or maybe to Guelph or London, maybe our, our values are still a little lower, lower than these places. But in comparison to Port Dover, we are seeing huge increases and the price is going up. But again, Dover is a, a, a destination. People want to live here. So we're seeing that um, but uh, yeah, pros and cons of living here in Port Dover. Dover's a great place to live, but it's getting very expensive, that's for sure. So lastly, this isn't a pro or con, but going back to Urban Parisian. Now I was at Urban Parisian yesterday. This is the bonus, and you gotta try this when you're in town. Now listen, this is a this is a secret, one of the best kept secrets in town. Brad started making deviled eggs. Now I don't know if you like deviled eggs. Now a deviled egg, of course, is a hard-boiled egg that's been cut in half, and they take the yolk out and they mix it with mayonnaise and other ingredients, and then they dish that back into that, that um, the, uh, the half of the hard boiled egg, the white part. And it's so good. I mean, the cheese and bacon, he's got them with green onion, he's got all these spices. My mouth's just watering thinking about it. So they're so good. Deviled eggs at Urban Parisian, you gotta check them out. One of the best kept secrets in town. It's right up there with the Airy Beaches, um, Airy Beaches celery bread and their pickled pumpkin. Um, there's just it's just one of these these great uh, food um, uh, food offerings here in Port Dover. You got to check it out in Urban Parisian for sure. So so that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Those are my pros and cons. Again, next month that may change. Hopefully we can see some of these cons, in particular the parking issues here in Port Dover, get better. That is the goal that they hopefully get better. But um, if you're considering moving to Port Dover, contact me. Send me a message. Call me email me, send me a text message. Um, happy to help anyone, and I've been doing it for a while now. Helped a lot of people move here to Port Dover. A lot of people call Port Dover home today, and I'm really happy to help, and I'm happy to help you as well. So we'll see you in the next video. Keep smiling, we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.